Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for watching Police Tube. I've got exciting news. I just couldn't wait to make this video, so I wanted to make it while we're driving here. This is really exciting. Jeremy, uh, he called me like a, if you haven't seen my last video, Jeremy called me yesterday at 2 a.m. in a panic basically because the guards at the prison that were giving him a bologna sandwich against his will. Um, and I had called the warden of the prison to get it taken care of, and he promised that he would. Uh, but I heard back from Jeremy tonight, and he says it still wasn't resolved. Um, so I'm going down to the prison right now to speak to the warden. Uh, his warden, his name is uh, Warden DeMonte. Uh, they called him. They call him Warden G. Warren G. Warren DeMonte. Griffin the Third. That's the. Uh, that's the warden at Sumter County Prison Facility. So I'm headed down there right now. I'm gonna be filling out some paperwork and I don't care how long it's gonna take. I'm not gonna let Jeremy deviate from his faith. I'm gonna go down there. If I have to stay up all night, I will. I do have a, 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 a peanut butter sandwich with me because I don't think Jeremy has eaten. Jeremy's calling me right now. I'll call him back because I got to make this video. By the way, my last video uh, got a lot of clicks, a lot of views. So thank you to all my fans. I appreciate all you guys supporting Motor 4, Motor 6, whatever you want to call me, Motor 2, 3, 4. Oh, wow. He's really trying to get a hold of me. I am, I'll call him back though, because I'm headed down there right now. I might stop at McDonald's though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stop at McDonald's before I go. But this is important. I'm gonna get me some McDonald's, by the way. Jeremy, I got, I made him the peanut butter sandwich. Well, I got him the bread, and then the peanut butter is on the side. So I, I was gonna let him put it together himself. Uh, I ain't gonna do that. I am headed down there immediately to speak to the warden and to speak to the uh, lieutenant, the supervising lieutenant. His name is Daryl Johnson. I'm gonna put him on blast right now. Daryl Johnson, and he lives at. 4302 Tampa Street in Montgomery, Florida. And I'm not just making up an address and a name either. These are the actual people. Um, the warden of the prison, he lives at 63 Chesternut Street in Tampa. So if you guys want to call him, his number is KL54032. So for all the little motors out there that want to help support Jeremy, he actually needs your help more than anything right now. If uh, you guys can go out to your local McDonald's right now and just order a Jeremy sandwich, you know, that's going to send a message, hashtag Jeremy sandwich on social media. And if we get enough people doing that, it's going to get these fast food restaurants and young people asking, you know, what is with this Jeremy sandwich? And the word will spread. Uh, we're starting the hashtag. I've already talked to some of the local funeral homes, and we are going to be posting that on social media. Hashtag Jeremy sandwich. Hashtag Jeremy sandwich. If I could, I would put it on the screen, but I can't, so I probably won't. But what we're going to do, we are going to put that on social media with the help of local funeral homes. We're gonna use a little local media buzz to get that put out there. And if you guys can help that out, hashtag Jeremy Sandwich, go to McDonald's, request it. When they say they don't know what it is, demand it. Tell them it's your right and do not leave the drive-through until they ask you to explain what is a Jeremy Sandwich. And then I don't know, we don't have any strict instructions on what to, how to explain what a Jeremy sandwich is, so just wing that part, you know. We're gonna figure that out later with the whole mission statement and everything. We're gonna be posting it back up on jeremydewaycase.com. We're gonna relaunch that. A lot of people thought that the domain was canceled, but we just stopped the hosting. You know, we basically forgot to pay the bill. You know, I'm Scott, I was working with Jennifer. You know, I'm Michael Breen's assistant doing the paperwork Jennifer was organizing the site you know we paid for it Jennifer you know she wrote the stuff I I help you know no big deal I'll probably cut all that out I don't want anybody to know that but the thing is is that we are bringing back Jeremy DeWitt 
www.ghostbusinessclub.com and in a big, big way. So we are going to be launching everything up there. And it starts with hashtag Jeremy Sandwich. And we are going to get mayor, I'm not the mayor, maybe we'll contact the mayor, but we're going to get Warden DeMonte Griffin III, Warden G, to make the change starting tonight. Starting tonight, with tonight's sit. We got tonight's bologna sandwich that I'm going to give to Jeremy personally, and they're going to let me in that prison. I can tell you that. So, anyway, thank you for staying with us here in Little Motors, my fans. You know, you guys are my big supporters. You know, we do this for you. So, there's a motel up here that's a really great motel. Uh, it's $12 a night. Um, uh, just night's four hours. So, it's, you get in four hour increments. It's a great motel. It's right up here right up here on the right and then it's on the right again Jennifer told me about it if you want to check that out so um, I'm going to give you guys more updates from the prison as soon as I get in there as soon as I get out of there you guys are going to know what's going on I might even update you guys from McDonald's so stay tuned we're going to get Jeremy out of prison Okay, I wanted to give you guys an update. I've driven through the night to get to Sumter Work Camp, um, and I am here to see Jeremy. I'm about to go in right now, so I wanted to start recording some of this. I'm going to record some bits as I go. Um, like I said, I am going to get into the prison, so we're going to make that happen. And I don't know if they're going to allow me to bring my cell phone in. I know they're going to try to stop me, but I'm going to see what I can do to uh, make that happen. Or maybe another recording device or something. I've got some options that I planned out, but we're going to see how that goes. So it took me two and a half hours to get here uh, driving, which is not too bad. The weather is actually pretty warm tonight. It was cold but uh, a couple nights ago, but it's actually starting to get pretty comfortable out right now so it's a good night to be here and I know I'm going to take a couple hours to get this done so I will definitely check back in okay I'm now in the interior waiting lobby uh, facility it's behind if you don't know if you haven't been to a Sumter work camp you can come on to the premises just by driving through there's a chain link fence basically anybody can drive through it but once you park you have to walk walk I'd say it's probably 300 feet um, until you get to the front reception area and it's basically like a, a secured lobby um, you go through the front doors and then uh, they pat you down and then they put you into the waiting lobby where I'm at right now so I'm just waiting I do have the um, peanut butter sandwich with me and I have my phone I left everything else in the car um, so you know I'm going to keep checking back in they said it should take 15 minutes, and that was about 45 minutes ago, so nobody knows how long this takes. If you're not familiar with the prison system, they kind of just do things on their own time. They don't really care about, you know, people from the internet trying to come in and see prisoners too much. So, you know, I guess, you know, they got me waiting, so I'll check in. Okay, they just came and got me right now, and they are taking me to see Jeremy. Uh, we're going behind closed doors. They told me I should not be recording, but I am right now. So I will continue to check back in. All right, so I'm back in my car. Um, that didn't go too well, you know. Uh, I'm embarrassed. You know, Jeremy was upset. You know, he raised his voice at me. He said he didn't want to see me. He was upset. He said he was upset because just because I had said that I was his brother Dylan and that it was an emergency and they pulled him out of his cell. And since it was an emergency, they woke him up. It was a big old ordeal. They brought him out of his cell. It was kind of a surprise to him, I guess, um, because, you know, I don't know if you know, he didn't really call me the other night like I implied in my last videos. So I guess me driving down here may have been a little inappropriate and for me to say I was Dylan and that I, it was an emergency and uh, 
you know, you guys should have seen the his the look on his face though when he walked through that glass. Because if you guys don't know, I was in a secured waiting room, and then it's enclosed by glass, so I was able to see Jeremy before he actually came into the room, and uh, they had him in handcuffs. And he walked up behind the glass door, and he looked at me, and the look on his face was like, you know, where's my brother? And it was priceless. I'll never forget that. I wish I could have got a picture, but they took my phone. Um, so anyway, they uh, they un- uncuffed him, and they let him in. They locked the door. And Jeremy sat down in front of me, and he said, where's Dylan? And I said, I'm sorry to tell you that, you know, I pretended I was Dylan uh, because I wanted to get this interview with you. Basically for clicks on the internet, uh, you understand, from my channel. And uh, he was like, what? What's going on? I don't, he says, I'm a little confused, is actually what he said. And I explained, you know, I'm police tube. And that's when he actually really lost it. Um, he started raising his voice to me where the guards, they tapped on the window like that. And they were like, signaled to him, like, calm down. Um but, you know, I'm still a little shook up. My adrenaline's still going because he yelled at me. He's like, you know, who do you think you are? I'm going to make a whole other video about it and tell you exactly what went on. I gave him the peanut butter sandwich because I, and I explained the Jeremy sandwich hashtag and the ordeal with the bologna sandwich and how the whole Internet was blowing up because they heard about his bologna sandwich ordeal from Jennifer and... He thought that was kind of cool, but he was so mad that I had snuck into the prison under these false pretenses. Um, he, he didn't. It was only a few minutes before he got up and left, and he turned around and said, "I better never do anything like this again." And he's going to be calling his attorney. But that's when something really special happened because when he said he's going to call his attorney, I said, and I said it just like this: I said, "Amir Ladan, the best attorney in Central Orlando." And that's when he stopped and he looked back at me and he said, with a smile, he said, you know, I say that. And he walked out of there and I was like, fucking A, you do say that. So right now it's 3 a.m. in the morning. Some people hate when I say that 3 a.m. in the morning, like when else is it 3 a.m.? But yeah, it's 3 a.m. in the morning. And um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do as in whether I'm going to go to Taco Bell or a McDonald's. Oh, Taco Bell's not open. Okay. Well, I'm going to McDonald's. That'll be awesome. I love McDonald's. Shout out to McDonald's. I've been eating so much McDonald's lately, and I haven't put cheese on everything. Do you guys do that? I haven't put extra cheese on uh, the hamburgers when I get those. I haven't put uh, cheese on top of the French fries. Just cheese, cheese, cheese. It's, it might be an allergy or something. You guys heard of anything like that? Speaking of which, I'm eating cheese right now. I just stopped at McDonald's. I had to pause the tape for a minute. Okay, so let me tell you this too. We're celebrating a huge birthday bash. For those of you who know, Jeremy has a birthday coming up. So basically let me know what you guys are doing. Um, should we all get together? I was thinking about actually throwing a bash where we can all get together and celebrate um just our own lives, you know, not Jeremy's life, but Jeremy's in prison. But, you know, maybe we can all get together and, you know, meet and greet, you know, the whole community, you know, or maybe no one will even show up. Maybe nobody's even listening. Maybe you guys are all me and I've been setting up all these little franchises. And, uh, you know, the only person that's listening to this is actually myself. I read on the forums that you guys are me, that, you know, all these uh, accounts are actually police tube, you know, just commenting and viewing my own videos or something. So I don't know. You never know. I've seen movies. That kind of thing happens in movies. So you never know. I'm actually eating American cheese right now. I'm just opening a pack of cheese and just eating the cheese slice by slice. Do you guys do that? So anyway, um, Jeremy told me I should go home. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to his home and see what's happening there. I'm going to knock on the door at his request, of course. Um, I've got it basically on a tape. You know, Jeremy told me to come here. Um, I can say that. So I am going to try that, and I will keep you guys updated on what I find in and around his home. I'm going to be sneaking around 
for anybody that's listening, of course I'm not going anywhere. Okay. This is all just fantasy role play. You know, it's like War of the Worlds, you know, don't start freaking out. Okay. You know, police tube is not going anywhere. Or am I? You know, I'm actually am going to his home. I've got it on my GPS right now. So anyway, thanks for you guys watching. I'll make another video. All right, guys and gals, everybody that's watching, I appreciate you watching. If you don't know what I'm doing right now, then surprise, surprise, I want to let you guys know that I'm, again, I'm driving through the night because I'm going to Central Florida to meet with Jeremy DeWitt. Um, tomorrow, Saturday, April 9th, and this is real. You know, don't think I'm joking. I'm seriously going down and I'm going to sneak into the prison. I have a I have a map. I have a route. I've figured it all out. I've been working with this ex-convict that actually used to be imprisoned there. And apparently when he was there, he made this whole map where he was, he could have broken out. But of course, it was just such a short amount of time that he was never going to actually break out. But he still knows all the knowledge and we found each other and I told him, you know, I want to break in. And I'm telling you, at first he thought I was crazy, but then he started watching the police tube channel and he's like, yo, if you're breaking in, I'm coming with you. And I was like, you can't come with me. I'm a lone wolf. But he was like, okay, that's fine. That'd be crazy anyway. But he did give me the plans. We've discussed everything and I've practiced. I've done a dry practice run a number of times. We constructed in the middle of Kentucky we constructed a replica of Jeremy's path to the prison and so I'm very familiar with the layout and I'm going to be sneaking in there very very early Saturday morning when there's a guard shift change um, we've calculated this out apparently between 345 and 430 in the morning on Saturday they are going to do a guard shift change and that's where I'm going to make my way into the prison now I'm going to be disguised as a prisoner. That's going to be the best way to do it. What I'm going to do is, you know, I'm taking advantage of the fact that the guards are making sure that people aren't breaking out of prison. It's actually surprisingly easy to break into prison. Um, and I'm going to have the outfit and everything so it looks like I belong there. And I may be punished. They may put me in the hole or I don't know what the procedure is going to be once they find me on the grounds. But I'm going to use that opportunity when they put me away because they're going to put me inside the prison where it's secure. They're going to lock me into a secure area. I'm telling you, this sounds crazy, but this is going to happen. I have everything I need, and I'm going to get into Jeremy's prison. And after that, I'm going to conduct an interview. Now, the part that I'm not so sure on is how I'm going to get out of this prison. I'm pretty sure I, I have a plan, and I'm pretty sure it'll work because I have an attorney on standby. He's going to be calling first thing uh, Saturday morning and start working to get me out of prison because he's going to claim that I'm not supposed to be in prison. And once the legal paperwork gets sorted out where the prison realizes that they're, they're holding me without a, uh, any right to hold me, they're going to kick me out of the prison. So whole bunch of what ifs here, but I'm going to do it for you guys. And I'm driving through the night right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, you know, I'm going to, when I get there today, I'm going to get a hotel and I'm actually going to sleep for the rest of the day. But once sundown comes, I'm going to make my way toward the prison. I'm going to be camping out outside the prison gates for the entire night until I notice that the guards are doing their shift change between 3.45 and 4.30 in the morning. And that's when I'm going to make my move. So this is very exciting. I want you guys to stand by. Now, I don't know when I'm going to be able to make the next video. I'm a hoping I'll be able to get out by Monday and like I said this is real so you people on reddit this is for the people on reddit for when they're hearing this yes this is real I'm really breaking into the prison you know this is not satire you know you guys can sell satire from not satire and this is not satire okay this is truly true I'm gonna break into the prison and it's you guys may be surprised to find that, because I've talked to an attorney about this, that it's actually not illegal to break into a prison. You know, it it is punishable, a uh, criminal offense to break out of prison or disrupt the prison system if you are a prisoner. But if you're not a prisoner, it's not illegal to break in. Isn't that weird? 
So I'm taking advantage of a whole bunch of loopholes in the law because, you know, they don't spend a lot of time making regulations about things that most people aren't doing. So breaking into prison, legal, breaking out, not so legal, but I'm going to have them kick me out because they have no legal right to have me in prison. So it's possible I might even be able to sue them afterward for imprisoning me. So how great would that be? That would fund the whole Jeremy DeWitt Netflix documentary that I've uh, bought and shelved the uh, story to, so it'll never be made. Sorry, Jennifer. Now I am traveling down um, to the prison by myself. I have to. I did ask a number of people if they wanted to come with me, but apparently people aren't really into breaking into prison, you know. So just chalk it up with one of those bad ideas, uh, like you know, investing in a Depression-era themed restaurant. That was a terrible investment. And also that horse tranquilizer business um, that I got a part of. It was like a Amway type thing selling horse tranquilizers. And I guess people really aren't into those uh, these days. So anyway, this idea is going to pan out. I'm certain of it. So stand by. I appreciate you guys watching and being interested. Just, you know, you know, even for the people on Reddit that, you know, they say they can't stand listening to this yet. They're still sitting here listening to this. You know, and they're going to be sitting on the edge of the seats to figure out when and where Police Tube gets out of prison. Some people are probably calling the prison right now, warning them that Police Tube's brother is going to try to break in. And so, you know, hopefully they don't disrupt the plans here. So you got a lot of uh, people out there that are watching, keeping an eye on what's going on. I am filming this while I'm driving. If you were born with two hands, then why not talk on the phone while driving? I don't know of any laws against it, per Florida statute. Besides, I'm doing this for self-defense purposes only. So, typically if you do things for self-defense, you know, that's going to make it legal. So, I appreciate you guys watching. Gosh, sure I'm hungry. I should stop by maybe, uh, what, McDonald's? Is that a good place to hold a business meeting? Mickey D's. There's got to be a Mickey D's up here somewhere. So anyway, as you know, it's April 8th. My brother, Police Tube, he started making Jeremy DeWitt videos a year ago today. In fact, he's going to be having a big bash on his channel uh, to celebrate. Um, you know, I saw part of the video. Personally, Police Tube bores me. I can't watch his stuff, you know. He's too annoying. But um, I hear that he's a big fan of the other brother, you know. Uh, all the brothers are, except for one of our brothers, the fifth brother. You know, I also want to give a shout out to a couple Jeremy DeWitt creator uh, YouTube channels here. Uh, the first one is Digesting DeWitt version 2. you got to look him up in uh, YouTube. He's putting out some YouTube videos about Jeremy. Also, Steve-O1, his channel is called The Rideshare Rookie. I want you to subscribe to both those guys. Steve-O1 should be back any day now, hoping. And then there's this other guy, his name's True Crime Phenomenon. He's been putting out some refreshing videos about Jeremy. You know, not, not a lot of people are coming new onto the scene right now, but True Crime Phenomenon, you can check that out. He's put out a number of Jeremy DeWitt videos. And, you know, if you're new to the saga or you want to give a good recap of what went on there, you know, he's starting fresh from the beginning. So check out those three channels. And, uh, you know, don't check out Froddy, by the way. Um, as you know from last summer, I've discovered that his real name isn't even Froddy, so, you know, his last name's not Operator. Don't subscribe to Froddy. You may know that Froddy owes Police Tube rent, $15,000 in rent that he said he would pay Police Tube, and he never paid not a dime. Uh, so that Froddy, thought he, could, thought he could be trusted, but, you know. Oh, wait, does that say Froddy? No, that says Buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Froddy, yeah. Just subscribe to Froddy. Yeah, Froddy's a good guy. Well, hold it right there. I thought I just saw a raccoon run across the road. Did you guys see that raccoon? Now, if you have the ability to rewind this video, because I can't do it right now, look and see if you saw a raccoon back there, because I'm pretty sure I saw a raccoon. A lot of people have been asking me uh, if I know what happened to Jeremy's girlfriend, Jennifer. Now, Jennifer, if you're watching... And some of you that are watching may remember that last summer, 
uh, I put up a fifty thousand uh, dollar reward to Jennifer uh, for an interview, and I'd like to re- reiterate that uh, commitment right now: fifty thousand dollars to Jennifer for a one-hour interview, no holds bars, where the truth will come out. Jennifer, are you up for that fifty thousand dollars? Let me know. And we'll draw up the contracts. I mean, you don't have anything coming with Hulu or Netflix. I can guarantee you that. I've signed the agreements for the idea, and I'm putting it on the shelf. There's not going to be a Jeremy DeWitt documentary made. Not anytime soon. There's not going to be another Tiger King. I'm sorry to say. Jeremy doesn't want that either. I've discussed it with him in le- at length, and he doesn't want to be the next Tiger King. To be honest with you, I've discussed some of Jeremy's ideas and he sees himself as a more of a Mr. Belvedere type of TV character. And I tried to tell him, I don't see how that's going to work or fit into today's market or anything, but he's insisting that he wants to be portrayed like a Mr. Belvedere. So I don't know, maybe you guys can help us figure that one out. Um, You know, we're trying to appease Jeremy. If we do publish something as far as a documentary or a movie or a short series, Um, but I'm not feeling the Mr. Belvedere angle. I'm going to have to rewatch some of the series and just kind of see what goes on there. After talking to Jeremy a little bit, he does give me some Tony Danza vibes. Um, So I don't know. We're going to see what happens. I'm going to discuss this with Jeremy. It's going to be a huge surprise to him when I break into prison early, early Saturday morning. And good news is I should be there just before breakfast. I brought some rations for me to eat over the night uh, during the night. Um, you know, Friday night to Saturday morning. But I think when I get there, I think they give breakfast at about 6.30 or 7 o'clock or something like that. So I'm hoping to be able to grub in the uh, eating area. So I'm hoping to fit in. I should fit in, you know, very good because I was watching 60 Days In. So just learning how the power dynamics work there in prison. I think I figured it out. And I think I'm going to be able to get in and get out legally without too much of a problem what do you guys think now again for the people on reddit this is completely completely true this is not something that i would make up especially if you're like an older type gentleman that's on reddit maybe you like mustangs and you're a mechanic of some sorts that lives in florida maybe you were on the blue bacon channel once uh, doing an interview um i don't know but if somebody like that might be listening, I want you to let, let you know that I really am going to see Jeremy DeWitt right now. And I'm going to tell him that you said hi. And this is real. Does anybody know who I'm talking about, by the way? If you know who I'm talking about, or if you have a guess, I want you to comment it, the name in the comments down below. You know, don't, it's, it's just, I don't even know the person's name, so... You know, don't be commenting anybody's personal or private information. But if you know who I'm talking about, comment their username or whatever in the comments. Other than below. that, I'm actually going to pull over here because I've actually got to take a DeWitt. So I've been driving for a long time now. So I'm going to stop, do that, get something to eat. Um, I'll probably check back in before I go to the prison. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just wait until after I get out of prison. Hopefully it'll be early next week. So... Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. And as always, have yourself a good night. What's up, everybody? Thanks for watching. I wanted to do this follow-up. If you watched my last video, you know that I've driven through the night last night all the way down to Central Florida. And I'm uh, just, I spent the day sleeping, but now that it's nightfall, it's almost midnight here in Central Florida. And now I'm making my way to the outskirts of the prison where Jeremy is being housed and uh, basically going to camp out at night on the border of the prison until the guard shift change between 345 and 430 this morning. At that point, I'm going to be able to break into the prison without anybody recognizing. I've got a few rations. I got my coat. I got a bag filled with some supplies and I got my light and I'm basically one and a quarter mile away from the prison. Once I get there, I'm going to just lay low. I don't want any radio traffic or infrared from the video camera or anything like that giving away my location. So I'm going to be going dark 
And then once I find the opportune time, I will be breaking into prison. And I don't know how long I'm going to be able to uh, be in there for before I get kicked out or before I get released. My attorney is instructed to start making phone calls in the morning. What's that? Okay. Just to let them know that I'm not supposed to be in prison to start my release process. So I'm anticipating Monday. I swear I just heard something. Okay. What if there was somebody trying to break out of prison right now? Okay. Okay, so I should be out of here by Monday. I'm hoping. I just hope they don't keep me too long. I didn't bring a lot of food. I did bring a bologna sandwich. I thought that was a ridiculous thing to do because there's plenty of bologna sandwiches in the prison. But I'm anticipating that by the time I break in early this morning, I should be there in time for breakfast. Hopefully they're having something good. I'm thinking scrambled eggs with some pancakes and sausages. I don't know. So this is going to be a total surprise to Jeremy and for those of the people on Reddit that didn't believe <laughs> that I was actually going to come this far, I swear I'm hearing things. For people that didn't think I was going to be coming this far and actually didn't think I was really going to go to the prison, they thought it was just satire that I was actually going to do this well. I guess showed you wrong, you know think I have dumb ideas that I don't follow through on no way I follow through on all my ideas and I think I'm headed in the right direction I actually didn't map this out too well I just kind of started heading in the same direction um, where the map said that the prison was up here but I don't know I'm actually to be honest with you I've been walking around here for a number of hours it's keep saying it's 1.25 miles away but it's been saying that for at least two hours now. So I don't know. I could be circling the prison. Which I guess that could be a good thing. Could be a bad thing. There's nothing more peaceful than walking through a dark, scary forest in the middle of the night. Alone. With no rations. and I really didn't even tell anybody where I'm at. So hopefully I'll be alright out here. I should have brought my machete. Or at least a change of flashlight batteries because these, this flashlight, I can tell it's dying. Okay. I'm going to make another video for you guys from inside the prison if I can. You know, I have a secret way that I might be able to do this. So I just want you guys to stay tuned. This is a middle of the night video again. As I'm approaching the correctional facility where Jeremy DeWitt is housed, I will be getting in there. I will be befriending him. And then I will reveal that I am police tube. And then before he even realizes what happened, my attorney, uh, Malir Deland, the best attorney in central New York, is going to get me out of prison. Because you can't keep a guy in prison if he hasn't been convicted. You know, got, they could actually get in a lot of uh, trouble liability-wise for keeping a person in prison without the proper paperwork. So I should be able to get out hopefully Monday. You guys wish me luck. Why does it say I'm 2.5 miles, 1.5 miles, 1.25 miles away still? This is ridiculous. But I should be able to get there. I have three hours, four hours before the shift change. So stay tuned, guys and gals and people of the internet, and especially you on Reddit, because you thought this was a joke. But I'm proving right now that this is totally, totally serious. And it's easy to tell satire from non-satire. So thanks for watching, everybody. And have yourself a great weekend. It's April 9th now. Okay, what's up, everybody? Thanks for watching. I'm going to give you a tour of inside one of the prison cells here. I actually got into prison, and they found me outside in my orange jumper after I jumped over the fence, and they put me back inside. They haven't figured out that I don't belong here yet, so I'm learning all the ropes. Uh, this is a little tour of my cell. I got this curtain. Um, they put me in this cell. Apparently, they think I'm this guy. I don't even know the guy's name, but I got a TV. I got food. I got boxes. I'm learning the ropes on how to get stuff done here as well. As you can see, I got access to this guy's whole supplies and
box of food. I got these. I'm going to start trading these for power here on the inside. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, I got a lot of condiments, a lot of things here. And check out these pictures. You know, I got this whole guy's cell I'm taking over for the whole weekend. So this is very exciting that I actually got into prison. Check this out, by the way. I just learned how to get my CDs playing in here. I got some CDs, got my music, got my headphones. I also learned how to make a lighter. If we want to smoke, you take this, you plug that end into the wall, that wire right there, and then you tap the ends of the pencil together, and it creates a spark, and boom, you got a lighter. So we can smoke in here. Um, I'm by myself, you know, no other celly. So now I'm going to start working my way up the chain of power in here. As you can see, we got some fools out there. And I am going to get close to Jeremy DeWitt. I'm going to befriend him. And at that point, I'm going to reveal that I'm police too. Hopefully by the end of the weekend. So thanks for watching. I got to go. Bye bye. For English, press for a collect call. Press zero. Please enter your. Please enter the area code and phone number you. Please hold. Please wait while your call is being connected. Please hold. Hello, this is a free call from... It's me. An inmate at the Orange County Corrections. To accept this free call, press zero. To re this call is from a correction facility and is subject to monitoring and recording. Thank you for using Global Telling. Hey, please tell me some good news. Did you get a hold of Malir? You know, we I, I've been on the phone with him today. Tell me something good, please. He says he never talked to you about getting you out of prison. I sent him an email. I sent him multiple emails. You've got to get him the, getting the paperwork started. I'm trying. I'm, I really am trying. But Malir says this was a stupid idea for you to try to break into prison. Look, I don't, I don't want you, you know, belittling me right now. I need to get out of prison then. Belittle me all you want. You know, this might not have been the greatest move to break into prison just to get a YouTube video. I know. That's what Malir is saying. That's not the point. I'm trying to entertain the fans. So you guys have got to get me out of here, you know. People in prison are weird. They're so dusty, you know. Yeah, well, what do you want? What, so, what do you want me to do? What can I do? Look, I need you to call Malir and tell him to contact my girlfriend because she's going to file a complaint against the warden. Warden G is actually here. Um, I met him in intake, and he's not a nice person at all. Well, I mean, the wardens are there to, you know, keep the peace. Yeah, but this guy, he's. You know, something's wrong with him. He needs to get a complaint on YouTube. So if you can have my girlfriend start filing that, look, I'll do everything I can. But, you know, it was your brilliant idea to try to sneak into prison. Why are you keep... Stop. Look, just try to say as little as possible right now because this call is going to be recorded. Somebody's going to put it up online. You know, you're going to put it up online. You're trying to compete with the police tube channel, bro. It's not that I'm trying to compete with you. It seems like you started trying to compete with me. And then once your channel blew up, all of a sudden you're like, oh, you're better than me. I never said anything like that. I gave you shout outs on my channel. You hacked my computer and you put money from my ATM card on my global tell link account. You asked me to do that yesterday. Bro, come on. You're arguing with me while I'm in prison. You know, get the family together call the other brothers what other brothers are you talking about bro look call buddy you know tell him that he needs to call malir you're not helping did you call adrian have you called my mother look adrian he quit he says he doesn't want to have anything to do with you anymore why did adrian quit <laughs> He says he's had suspicions for a long time that, you know, you're too obsessed with Jeremy. Breaking into the prison, bro, really, why did you do that? Why didn't you even tell me? Honestly, I wanted to 
surprise you. I thought you'd be proud of me for getting the interview with Jeremy. Honestly, bro, it, it was pretty cool. It, it is a pretty cool thing to do. And let me ask you this. Have you seen Jeremy? <laughs> Have I seen Jeremy? Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to know? The answer is Y-E-S, bro. You saw Jeremy? Hell yeah, I saw Jeremy. And he doesn't know who I am yet. But I am going to tell him. Guess what I'm going to tell him, bro? Come on, you're not. In the last video, you said you were going to tell him you were police tube. Don't tell him you're me. Hell yeah, I'm telling him I'm police tube. He's going to freak. He's going to freak out. Oh, man. Aren't you afraid you're going to get in trouble for stuff like that? I mean, look, bro, let me do my thing. You're running your police tube channel the way you want. Let me run my channel the way I want, you know? Bro, what can I do for you? How can I help you? If you want to help me, you need to call mom and tell her to call Malir and get the paperwork started. And make sure that my contractors are paid tomorrow because we're doing a funeral escort for a super sketchy security funeral company. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, I don't want to lose this account. All right, I'll check that out. What account is it for? It's for super sketchy security funeral company. All right, yeah, I saw that one in the book. And do you mind if I take some money off the books for uh, to fill up my tank with gas? Go ahead. You can also take the the motorcycles out if you want. Go room them by Warden G's house. Look, it's probably not the best idea to probably be antagonizing Warren G from inside the prison right now. I mean, he is kind of in control of your life until you get out of there. Am I right? Yeah, but I should be out of here any time now if you file the paperwork. I need you to go to Malir's office, notarize the paperwork, put the truth in writing, and file that with the state. Yeah, I'll do that, but, you know, that's going to take some time. <sighs> how long are we going to... It's not going good in here. Look, I don't want to have to get into all this right now, but prison life, I'm not about this life. You have one minute remaining. Why are we out of time already? I'm supposed to get 15 minutes per call and it's only been six. I don't know. It seems like it's been a long time to me. Now, everybody gets 15. Somebody's stealing my time on the phone. That's what's going on. A lot of people in here, they steal your calling cards and they steal your food and, you know. But, bro, didn't you break into prison and aren't you taking over someone's cell? That's kind of like you stole all of their stuff. What happened to that prisoner? I don't know. Stop asking all these questions, bro. These calls are monitored, as far as I know. This could end up on the Fraudy International Operators channel. I know. So please. Uh, okay. Don't be giving out due to too many details. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, sorry. Look, before the line cuts, do you want me to pass any message on to your wife? Who? Your wife? What? Your wife. Oh, my wife? No, no. Who cares about my wife? I needed you to call my mother and get the family together. What family are you talking about? Look, tell mom that I just spoke with Dan Newlin uh, the other day. And I'm supposed to be having a check come from Dan Newlin any day now. And once I get that check, I will deposit it all to her. Is this for the fake insurance lawsuit? No, this is for the John Jeremy DeWitt thing. Look, stop saying all these things over the phone. Look, I only have a second left. Just get the family together. Thank you for using Global Telling. All right, you guys. I freaking love you guys, my little motors. I want to give you guys this update because things are not going the way I initially planned. Um, I, as you know, I snuck into the prison where Jeremy has been staying. I have not been able to make contact with Jeremy yet. I have gotten close. I know where he's located, and I do have a plan for that, but... Unfortunately, they tried to process me, and since I'm not in the system, they have placed me in solitary confinement for the time being while they try to figure out what's going on. Um, I've been down here for a few days. Sergeant Officer Jeffries of the 54th Battalion, he has been very kind. The state, she has been very kind. I also have a guy next door. I know it's supposed to be solitary, but there's a guy next door named Andy, which he's seems to be he's quiet, but you know, it's very interesting. I'll get to him in a minute. Um, I haven't been able to make any phone calls or anything other than one call to my brother and to my mother. 
and to my wife and to my girlfriend. Um, those calls are going to come out, I'm sure. You know, my brother, he's not helping. He won't get the family together. Um, but I've been learning the ropes from inside the prison here. I've been learning the power dynamics and how to establish yourself as a leader in prison. You know, on the outside, when you think about prison, it's, you think, you know, you, you become the leader by, by raping other males. But uh, no, I found out that that's not actually how it works in here. So I'll tell you guys all about that. You know, my, the guy next door, you know, Andy, he's been helping me that Andy is a peculiar fellow. You know, he came to this prison apparently early in uh, 1947 for murdering his wife and, and the fella she was banging actually on the outside, uh, prison, he was vice president of a large Portland bank. Uh, it was good work for a man as young as he was when you consider how conservative banks were back then. I must admit, I didn't think much of Andy first time I laid eyes on him. He might have been important on the outside, but in here, he's just a little turd in prison grays. Looked like a stiff breeze could blow him over. That was my first impression of him. He told me about his first night in here. Apparently the first night for a man on the inside is the toughest. No doubt about it. And they march you in. Naked as the day you were born, fresh from a Bible reading, skin burning, and half blind from that delousing shit they throw on you. And then when they put you in that cell, when those bars slam home, that's when you know it's for real. Old life blown away in the blink of an eye. A long cold season in hell stretching out ahead. Nothing left but all the time in the world to think about it. Most new fish come out close to madness the first night, I hear. Somebody's always breaks down crying. Happens every time. The only question is, who's it gonna be? It's as good a thing to bet on any, I guess. When I came in here, Andy told me he bet on me. But that's not how my first night went. <laughs> Seems like a long time ago now. We've, uh, we've had a couple new boys come in here. The other boys always go fishing with first-timers. And they don't quit till they reel someone in. Apparently my first night in here... I cost Andy two packs of cigarettes. I never made a sound. I kept my ear to the ground. And hell, I fit right in in here. Another thing, everybody's innocent in here. You guys know that. Personally, from what I've been told, Andy's the type of man who knows how to get certain things. They seem to just fall into his hands. <laughs> Maybe it's because he's Irish. So I came up with this idea I did. I asked him if he could get me a rock hammer. And he asked, you know, Rockhammer, what is that and why? I told him uh, to mind his own business. But that's when he told me, hey, if you wanted a toothbrush, I wouldn't ask questions. I'd just quote a price, a toothbrush I see, and I give it to you. I told him fair enough, and I explained that a rock hammer is about eight or nine inches long. Looks like a miniature pickaxe with a small, sharp pick on the end and a blunt hammered hammerhead on the other. I told him it's for rocks. And he was like, for rocks? I was like, yeah, for quartz. He was like, quartz? And I said, yeah, sure. Look, mica, shale, silted granite, it's everywhere in this prison. And there's some graded limestone from when they cut this place out of the hill. Personally, I told him, you know, I'm a rock hound. At least I was before I snuck into prison. I told him I'd like to be again on a limited scale. That's when he told me I'm probably going to take that and put it in someone's head. And I was like, I don't got any, any, any enemies in here. I'm not going to get any, any either. And he told me, just wait. He said, when word gets around and some of those guys start taking a real shine to me, especially one named Boggs, he basically told me I'm going to have some real problems. So I asked him, would it help if I explained to them that I'm not homosexual? And he told me that neither are they. He says, you'd have to be human first to be human, uh, uh, homosexual. And he said, they don't qualify. You should see the look on Andy's face when he told me this too. He told me I should grow eyes in the back of my head. I told him thanks for the advice, and he says the advice is free. That's when he reckoned that I might want to use this rock hammer to escape. He said, you're going to be tunneling under the wall? That's when I laughed, and he asked me, what are you laughing at? And I told him, you'll know once you see the rock hammer. You know, because it's small and it's for gyms. He asked me what the price usually is on a rock hammer, and I told him, you know, it's about $7 at any gym shop. 
and he said his standard markup is 20%, but we're talking about a special object, and the risk goes up with special objects, so the price goes up. So we called it $10 even, and I said, 10 it is, and he said he'll see what he can do. He called it a waste of money, though, and I said, well, we'll see. The reason for that, you know, it's because the folks who run this place, you know, Warden G and Officer Jeffries, they love surprise inspections. They turn a blind eye to some things, but not a gadget like a rock hammer. They'll find it, and I'll lose it. Andy said if I mention his name, we'll never do business again. Not for a pair of shoelaces or for a stick of gum. So I thanked him for his time. He said, pleasure doing business with, thee, with me. After that interaction, I could see why some of the boys around here took him for a little being, being a little snobby. He had a quiet way about him, a, a walk and a talk that just wasn't normal around here. He strolled like a man in a park without a care or a worry, like he had on an invisible coat that would shield him from this place. Yes, I think it would be fair to say that I liked Andy ever since I got in here two days ago. One day I heard Andy laughing as he approached me. I said, Andy, what's going on? And he says, I finally got your joke. He said it would take a man about 600 years to tunnel under the wall with one of these rock hammers. And that's when he gave it to me for $10 even. Well, later that night, Boggs found Andy. And I wish I could tell you that Andy found, fought a good fight that night and that they let him be after that. I wish I could tell you that. But prison is no fairy tale. Hey, how's it going, you guys? Long time no talk. I can assure you that I've been a little busy. For those of you who are not paying attention to everybody else's channel... Um, especially Mr. Froddy, you know, Mr. Used Car Salesman in Australia, or YouTuber, whatever you want to call him. You know, today I'm dressed in my clothes. And I'm not dressing like someone else or to act like someone else because I wear what I'm wearing for me. But those that are just now catching up a little bit, um, of course, as you probably know, there's a few different posts out there I did go to court today. Of course, those that know the, what's going on or are actually paying attention. Unfortunately and sadly, the other brother channel on YouTube has been ordered to be dissolved, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be pretending that I'm selling it off very slowly, okay? Um, which is okay because, you know, I need the money for other ventures. So as I collect that money, yet I retain the other brother channel, the courts will think that I'm selling it off. I will be coming home soon. And for those that are confused and continue to talk as if they know what's going on, I really love you guys. You know, the people that are always talking about me and spending ridiculous amounts of time and money to write up things about me and post it online. I know they probably won't address like me. Unfortunately, and sadly, one of my stalkers that have real serious mental issues and possibly maybe, I guess, sexual desires for my body, and they know where they live. And although he, he's never stopped by my house and, you know, come by and said hi, like, you know, a real man would, you know, he'll continue to poke the bear. Poke the bear, Sergeant Vidler would say. Poking the bear from a distance, but whatever. Hey, I'm free today, um, and right now, currently, while he's busy making fantasies up on his computer today in his town, and instead of me wasting my time making up ridiculous things on the internet and acting like I'm Jeremy DeWitt, I want to let you guys know that I'm currently driving right now to one of the best pizza restaurants in central New York. And while I'm in there, I'm going to be smoking some hookah. Yeah, there are, there are laws in New York against smoking inside public building, but I'm not really going to be obeying those per se. Instead, I'll be, you know, relaxing from the day, a day that was already very short, but it's been very stressful. I will say that there's a lot of things that are going on, a lot of negotiations that are being done. Certain people in the state are not only judges, but also prosecutors are working diligently with my attorney, Mr. Malir Deland. For those of you who don't know my attorney, Malir Deland, Malir is a lawyer's lawyer. When he gets dressed in the morning, he puts his suit on, his gray suit. It's like a suit of armor. And he is a lawyer. 
that every other lawyer should inspire to be or possibly mimic or possibly mock. And you know, Malir Deland is vital to my survival. That being said, touching on some other basis, uh, granted, unfortunately, I was down and out for a couple months, as you probably know, in the beautiful hotel that I call YouTube hell. I just wanted to let you know that a lot of the staff members at YouTube have been very supportive and very protective of me. In fact, a few of them tell me how they're little motors and that they, and that they hope everything works out for me. In fact, my morning when I was making a video, they contacted me and four of them got on a conference call with me. And, you know, the staff at YouTube, they wanted to make sure that there was no one else in the room with me because they all got together and sang the happy birthday song for the police tube anniversary. You know, it was like five in the morning. So being called from staff at YouTube on my personal cell phone number and having them surround me like that and just sing happy birthday, that was a proper welcome back to social media, proper customer service per se, and the proper help. They made sure that the proper help would be delivered to me every single day. And it was very touching and moving for those agents at YouTube. And they know who they are, especially the two nice ladies from the HR department and a very young man that him and the other female that work together in the creator support department. You know who you are and you guys are extremely professional. Even knowing who I am on YouTube and my brother, you guys know who I'm talking about. You guys moving my YouTube videos around and giving more views. I wanted to tell you thank you for that day. So there's obviously, obviously for those people who aren't figuring it out yet, there's more to the story than what's just being put out there by other YouTube channels that don't even have any information other than some thoughts that they made up last night while they were trying to go to sleep, but they were busy thinking about me and my brother. Not even a clue what they're talking about. They have no idea. I did love how some dumb idiot posted about the video that I made the other day. I didn't even read his entire title. That's how little time I paid attention to it. I know I'm making a video right now while I'm driving again to said pizza restaurant to smoke hookah. But even though I'm dealing with all these other videos and stuff on YouTube, I don't have time to give anyone, let alone some lowlife lying about me, who also tried to call my wife, by the way, and my girlfriend, neither of which would even give them the time of the day or waste their time. I literally just listed three things that would not even be anywhere near happening in my life on somebody that's going to supposedly badmouth me and put pictures of my girlfriend standing inside my wife's house onto the internet. And I also love this guy that's acting like a chick on the internet. I mean, he says he's a chick that loves to make these posts. You guys are just killing it. I can't tell you how much publicity you're giving me. One day when I can explain a little bit, I will give some more information because some of the things that are happening, you would think that they were done improper, but maybe there was foresight into what was happening. There was decisions that I've made to get the attention that I needed on the Jeremy DeWitt case. I need to get eyes on the case for certain reasons. And the publicity that I needed to root out the problems that were being hidden behind closed doors. And maybe one day you'll see that while I was supposedly in custody or in lockdown or whatever was happening over the last year, I received, I think it was like 70 letters telling me how, you know, they support me and that people really wish they could help. I did receive some money that people have been sending me to get my canteen up pretty high. I really appreciate that to those who did that. I appreciate my fans, my little motors. Trust me, my little motors, trust me. Metro State Special Services is being dissolved, but I'm not being dissolved, and my brother's not being dissolved. And one day, the little motors will be able to enjoy in something else. So I'm not gone, and I appreciate the money, the support. I appreciate the letters. I only had one douchebag from Melbourne, Florida, the same guy that sent a bunch of emails to my email. <laughs> Boy, what a waste of life. Sorry I haven't been able to talk in a while. I've been ranting for a little bit. Lots of stuff to talk about because, again, 
there's a lot of things that happened in jail and you know I need a vacation it's a nice it's nice to have a plan of what to do in prison possibly getting back in shape and working out because since apparently my mammary glands have some sort of disease or something of that nature to where my chest is bigger than the rest of my body but I guess losers that don't even work out don't really understand how that works too much time spent behind the computer I and mean, for those of you who don't know since my motorcycle accident my last one uh, in 2014 when I was in a coma and unfortunately they actually did flatline me or I flatlined and they brought me back since my accident in 2014 I haven't been a, to a gym one single time since I've been kind of dropping the ball I'm getting a little old a little gray in the hairs you know especially the last couple of years three years almost now been dealing with this it's interesting that come this September we're going to have an anniversary date of how long this has been going on and for those of you that don't know September of this year Jeremy should be out of prison and starting another YouTube channel is apparently what he said and hopefully certain things will work out you know while I was in Osceola County a few months back I did write up a deal but Osceola did not want to take that deep, which I'm grateful for. They were, the state was very kind, and she's worked very hard with Mr. DeLand to facilitate my, my case. And the state dropped two more charges in exchange for me making a couple more videos. They dropped those as well, so they had two that were pending. They dropped those. They didn't even file them. And then they had the one that was for my other YouTube channel, which you guys don't even know about. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes in life it can get a little out of control. You can go too fast and you just start asking for bundled deals and you don't realize that it includes a home phone. And I guess because I never even made a phone call from the home phone, they're still trying to charge me for saying there's a $175 cancellation fee. What are you going to do? There's probably information that might have been given out in an improper way. I don't know the situation. I do know that um, those charges from the state were dropped and because of that we were able to come to an agreement and since it's all over the internet already and posted you guys know what it is and you know again I need some time away I have to pay my penance I did do certain things I needed to do certain things to get to where we are today where you're listening to me today um, and maybe showing more of the truth about what was happening behind the scenes in the Jeremy DeWitt case because currently for those of you that are still paying attention I know that I keep saying that and I'm sure one of you dumb schmucks will waste their time and post that that Jeremy's in prison and Viddler's fired but what that person doesn't realize is that maybe something's going on that not everybody is aware of or maybe you guys forgot about the part that I'm talking about I don't know we'll see what happens there in their whistleblower case about the political corruptions as far as these YouTube videos and other stuff on the internet I love how much time you guys have to waste I cannot fathom how you have so much time to waste but I guess because of my cases and my wife's extracurricular activities and everything she was doing and most of all my beautiful daughter I'm very personally very busy so I don't have time to just sit around and make videos all day but anyways as you can see and here by the way I'm talking I'm very hungry I'm currently parked outside the pizza restaurant right now shout out to pizza pizza restaurants all throughout New York I'm pretty sure that the rest of you folks will probably start calling these pizza restaurants and being like hey don't serve food to this guy and his family oh he's a youtuber and he makes jokes and he makes videos and he's obsessed we don't have proof of any of that but we're just gonna say that he's obsessed because of some old news that has no basis to it that was put out by some guy that doesn't even have security clearance he says he doesn't even have a YouTube channel but he's upset that people were bothering him on his YouTube channel and the other guy says he's an investigator and the other girl listen you can be whoever you want to be and you can tell whatever story you want I mean there's people that will make millions off of just going to the grocery store and eating food and acting as if they have the clearance to tell you about someone else millions of dollars is what they're making doing that but I don't know other than that like I said I'm about to eat some pizza I'm not gonna be sitting around today watching videos that were supposedly about me 
but I'm sure you guys are going to be posting and making comments and liking and subscribing to my channel, of course. And being like, oh, this isn't even Police Tube's brother. They're the same person. Pfft. All that stuff, again, so you know, it's not true. And I can confirm that all of it is under investigation by Internal Affairs. It's all picking up speed. However, those that don't know, my brother is still attacking me pretty hard. He's giving me noogies and messing up my hair. Hopefully that can all be resolved pretty soon and or delayed for a while. Um, right now, I'm just beyond grateful for the extra freedoms that I have right now. The extra times that I have right now. You know, what I just realized, for those that are a little confused, yes, I'm going to eat lunch right now, but I'm also going to do a business deal. This is a lunch to see business people. You know, you, you know, when you sell a business, you have to do certain things. They're called business meetings, and business meetings aren't normally held at McDonald's. They're held at pizza places, okay? Malir is a key for those that don't know. He was actually just featured in a very, very large YouTube channel for lawyers and listed as one of the best lawyers in central New York. I wish that people understood the gratefulness that I have for him. But anyways, with that said, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm sure we're going to have another meeting or two of the minds here, and we'll talk to some more people, I hope. I wish you guys could see the suit that I'm wearing. It's Armani. And for those of you who want to talk about me, and I've got my, a pair of Oakleys on, and I've got three others on me as well, and I'm wearing two watches, I don't know. You guys can just look it up, you little keyboard warriors. I miss you guys. I miss you guys. I miss talking to you. I miss talking to you. I miss talking to my fans. I miss you guys and my all my funeral homes that we're watching and all my fans you know and the only way I can survive this gauntlet of lies and maze of deceit and and the YouTube algorithm is to keep putting out videos I have extremely big plans coming up and the money that will be needed for that is on its way I've been selling a lot of stuff on eBay and for those of you that have been buying my stuff you guys are cool you're not only just cool and buying my stuff, but you're asking me to sign the stuff. You guys have no idea how many things that I've signed. And I can't tell you, I've sold more on eBay than you would actually guess. I know I could happily figure some things out with other businesses, and I've got big things coming soon. I can promise you that. Big things will come one day. My little motors will see that. Maybe not be doing this on the YouTube or on the internet, but things will be coming. I can assure you of that. It's already in the process, and I'm figuring some things out with licenses, with Sirius XM Radio, and other things of that nature. You know, Police Tube and the other brother is not going anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. And again, all the publicity that's been given to me has not only helped. I mean, I'm selling things now on eBay. It's amazing the amount of time some people have on the Internet. I appreciate that I'm going to go eat a pizza right now, dressed up as myself. And while I'm in there, I'm going to be smoking illegally inside a public building. And probably at some point, you guys are going to be seeing the video because it'll be released out there of me doing that. Along with me personally saying, that's not even me at the business meeting. Personally, I don't need you guys knowing what I'm doing, but maybe I'll show you some of the pizza and the contracts that we're about to sign and we'll go from there. You know, I'll talk to you guys soon. I appreciate you watching. Motor One's moving. As always, have a good day. Let me start off, first of all, by saying I didn't want to make this video. I didn't want to make any videos, but I felt that I had to make this video. I know it's been a long time since my last video, but I just had a couple things that I wanted to say. Now, you may be wondering, where am I going right now? Well, I'm about to tell you. I am again traveling through the night. Um, I'm going to drive no matter how long it takes me. It doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing or whatever. I am going to accomplish this mission. Where am I going tonight? I am coming to your house. That's right. Uh, for all you gullible people out there, because I know there's a lot of you, but I want to let you know that I'm coming to your house. I'm going to do this. I'm coming there tonight and I will, I won't be bothering you, but I will be hiding out in the bushes outside. Um, I, if you have a trash can or something, 
Um, I might be around that. I'm, I don't know exactly. I'm going to look around, see if there's a bush or preferably a tree for me to hide in. Um, you know, I'll be, I'll be figuring it out. Well, a lot of times what I like to do is I have this uh, a fake lawn material. It looks like fake grass. And I bring that. It's like a 10 by 10. And then I'll just lay in the grass and I'll put that over me. And it makes it look like it's just a little lump in the grass. You can't really see anything. But I plan on coming to your house. And I'll be out in your yard in your grass tonight so make sure you're looking for me okay i don't know what time i am due to arrive there's going to be traffic and probably be early morning so probably if you go outside early morning start looking around i guarantee that i'm going to be hiding so good you're not even going to be able to find me i'm a master at cloak and dagger uh, uh, camouflage. I could be standing right in front of you and you wouldn't even see me. So I am going to do this. I'm driving right now. Um, I do have one stop to make, uh, probably stop up here at the gas station just to fill up, uh, grab a Red Bull, um, and, uh, you know, maybe a pack of blackjack gum or something. I don't know. But I, after that, it's clear sailing all the way straight to your house and I should be there tonight so you know go ahead go to sleep gullible as you are sweet dreams and when you wake up in the morning I will be camping out in your grass how crazy is that I'm gonna be at your house unbelievable isn't that after that, I don't know. I've had some other plans. You know what I think I might do is I might scale Kilimanjaro tomorrow. Um, I might actually try to swim the Atlantic one of these days, maybe next week. I don't know. The weather's starting to warm, so we got warm currents flowing up. You know, that might be feasible. What do you guys think? Um, if I post a video of me, someone of me swimming in the ocean, are you guys going to congratulate me? If I post a video saying that it's raining outside... Tell me, are you going to believe it? I mean, is that as good as a weather report to you? Because I can tell you right now, obviously, you can see outside my windshield, uh, this is live. It is raining right now. There's heavy traffic. And this rain is actually headed your way. So you, I wouldn't be surprised if you see that it's raining either now or here pretty soon. And you can believe that. You can take that to the bank because this is, I'm a, weather, I'm a meteorologist, basically. And you can take that to the bank. You literally can. They won't stop you from taking that to the bank. Now, I've also been working on a little something I call a time machine. Here's another little something I've been working on, and I don't want anybody to know about this, so just keep it between you and I, if that's okay. You know, everybody else, just turn, turn off the video, but you, you stay. Listen to this. I've been working on what I call a time machine, and basically i've gotten the calculations and the things correct in order to create a ripple in space time where i'm actually going to be able to do time travel we're going to be able to do time traveling here pretty soon now i want to know from you would you want to go forward in time or would you want to go back in time because it's going to be possible and i'm going to be probably putting this on my channel i don't know next week i don't know when exactly but you know, when I uh, do, it's going to be posted right here on uh, the YouTube. So make sure you're tuned in for that. So tell me, you know, what would you want to do, forward or backward? Do you want to do it? You know, you want to try it out? I'm bringing it with me. It's actually in the back of the car. So, you know, in the morning, maybe we can talk about it. I'm bringing an extra Red Bull for you. I don't know if you want to come out maybe really late tonight or something and we'll crack them open. I don't know. Um probably expect me in four and a half or five hours although after i release uh, the time machine in a few weeks uh, the time when i'm going to be there is going to be completely irrelevant in fact you may have already noticed that i've been signaling you from the future i've been sin sending signals to you on a quantum level if you notice that old watch that I left for you in your bookshelf, you know, the time, the second hand is ticking and that's a code. You got to figure this out, you know, just like on that one movie, you know, with Mel Gibson. Okay, I'm actually seeing some police officers on the road here, so I don't want to keep vlogging and driving at the same time, especially in the rain because, you know, it's, who cares about being dangerous? You, you could get a ticket. 
that's the problem. So, you know, I'm going to let this go. And please, nobody call the police on me for driving while using my cell phone, please. Um, I will be at your house uh, later tonight. Um, so just be standing by. Uh, I don't know if you want to give me a call or I'll give you a call when I'm outside. Maybe I got a Red Bull for you if you want it. Um, but, you know, just come outside. I'll be hiding on the lawn uh, somewhere. See if you can find me. I'll try to make some more videos. Uh, if you don't find me by the morning, I will uh, make another video um, and just kind of give you a hint of where I might be. How's that sound? Pretty good? All right. Um, well, sounds good to me. So I guess I'll see you in the morning. Um, okay. I'm glad nobody else is watching this video except for you and I. So I guess I'll be at your house in the morning. Hello, everybody. As you can see, I am currently traveling. I've got my boarding pass ready and you can see that I am on my way to your house. So here we are, we're walking through the airport right now. Hope you guys are having a good morning. How's everybody doing today after the holiday weekend? Hope you guys got a very productive weekend in. I was out uh, traveling and I decided before I stop back at my house and settle in for the summer, I thought I'd stop by your house. What do you think? No cap. Let's see here. What gate do I need to be at? I'm looking for United Airlines 39. Hey, I, I'm not good with airports. I don't even know if I'm going in the right direction. I could be exiting the airport for all I know. But what I do know, what I know for sure, is that when a person slips and falls outside a public library, that person is entitled to $1 million punitive damages and $1 million compensatory damages. I rest my case. I'm just a caveman. Okay, let's see here. I should stop and get something to eat, but I don't have time right now, especially in today's economy with these airport prices. It's $5.50 for a banana. You're talking about $9.75 for a medium cup of coffee. $7.25 for a croissant. Uh, gas prices are up to $7 per gallon today. Two liter of Coke is up to $5. Pack of cigarettes is up to $11.35 in the city. This is insane, everybody. Okay, let's see here. Where am I going? I don't even know where I'm going. But I do know that I will end up at your house later today. Some people may be wondering, why am I at this airport if I'm coming to your house? I know it might not make sense, but what I do know is that I am definitely, seriously coming to your house. I found out where you live over the weekend, by the way, and I thought, you know, why not come and visit? You know, you watch my videos. I figure maybe we can make some videos together, man. I think my plane is out here. I need to push this door, I feel. Okay. This does not look right. Okay, I'm going back down this way. Look. Here's the deal. I think this is my plane up here. Let me pause this. All right, we're back. So I think if we figured it out, the planes, you have to be in the, the, the plane, the terminals are inside, not outside in the parking lot. So here we go. We're at uh, gate seven. Should be right down here. Ooh, that food looks good. I can't eat right now though. I'm on a mission, excuse me. 
I've still got a lot of time before my plane board, so you know we're going to keep walking around here, exploring this airport, looking for security flaws, signs of weaknesses, you know maybe alarm codes, you know key cards, uh, maybe uh, potential industrial accidents. Make sure people aren't going too fast. I'll report them to the offices. It's thinking about buying things, but you can't be buying things at airports because it's just too costly in today's economy. That's the thing. I was talking to Jeremy about the prices because he's been locked up. And basically the prices in commons, commissary are far more expensive than they are even at local airports. So, for example, he was talking about a, a bag of, a small bag of Doritos, you know, the cool ranch Doritos. You get the small lunch size bags. Normally those are 60 cents. If you buy them in the grocery store, you buy them in bulk, you know, they're around 40 cents. You get a pack of 20, excuse me, you get a pack of 24. In common commissary, Jeremy, he is paying $9.99. He's buying them from other inmates. Hi. So, I think that's insane, personally. And as far as for some of the people on the internet, I'm not so sure every one of them is sane either. Okay, I just got off my uh, cell phone. I was talking to my attorney, Malir Delan, the best attorney in central New York, by the way. Um, by the way, if you have any legal needs, you need to call Malir. He is literally like a knight in shining suit. You know, he wears this shiny polyester suit and when he puts this thing on, it's literally like he's dressing up to fight a dragon at the Knights of the Round Table. It's really amazing. And he, he has a lance as well. Anyway, I talked to him and he says that this whole idea of going to your house without telling you is a great idea. He says he's never seen anything like it. Jamba Juice. Look, maybe when I get there, we should get some Jamba Juice. I am starving. So, if you don't mind, maybe uh, maybe uh, I could ask you a favor and you could pick me up at the airport when I get in. What do you think? I don't know. I was just going to surprise you, show up at your house, and I was actually going to break into your car and just take it for a joy ride. How about that? Report that to the FBI. <laughs> I can't understand what they're saying. And there's an unattended kid here. Okay, look, here's what we need to do. I need you to fill up the car with gas because I'm gonna need that tonight. I'll probably arrive tonight while you're sleeping. I'm gonna take your car, I'll bring it back by the morning. And when you wake up in the morning, I'm gonna be hovering over you. And when you open your eyes, it's gonna be me. I'm gonna be like, hey y'all. Excuse me. Uh, do not freak out. Just because I'm going to show up at your house, it's no big deal. This is no big deal. Look, what I want you to do is... Is that Starbucks coffee? I'm going to get some coffee and then I'll hit you guys back up later. I'll see you tonight. Make sure you're standing by and waiting for me when I arrive at your home tonight. No joke. This is real. Goodbye. Thank you very much. I'm going to get some food. Talk to you later. Hey guys. So I have some great news. I've been making a plan for a while that I haven't been telling you about, but now it's safe to say because it's Thanksgiving day. And while you're at home with your families, enjoying a feast of Turkey, I am executing a plan to seek out and find Jeremy DeWitt. This video was made the night of Thanksgiving, the night before Thanksgiving. So I, I'm walking all through the night through the woods to break back into prison. Basically, just like I did the first time, except, of course, it's not actually a break in because, you know, I'm just wearing the orange jumper. I'm going to allow the prison guards again to find me and then insert me inside the prison so that I 
can meet with Jeremy DeWitt and deliver him a bologna sandwich for Thanksgiving. I've thought this whole thing through, and it's going to be remarkable. This time, I'm bringing my camera. It's a separate camera. I've got my phone, and I've got my camera. So, as you can see, I'm clearly walking through the forest. And right now, it is 2 a.m. on November 24th. 2022 it's the dead of night right now in florida united states as we're sneaking up on the prison we will be there soon my compass that i brought last time it was going wacko i found out why it was always saying that i am a mile and a half or something from the prison i brought a full-fledged gps navigational system this time so there will be no delays like last time i guys kept you waiting for a couple hours before I was able to finally broadcast the videos from inside the prison where I got took over the prison cell you guys remember that so we're going to be wrapping this year up with another great interview with Jeremy inside the prison at the end of 2022 I think this is going to be a great idea I've been thinking about it for a very long time planning out every detail meticulously I even have one of those cork boards up on the wall with thumb tacks tacked into it. And then I have string of different colors where I tie it from thumb tack to thumb tack. I'm telling you, it's a smorgasbord of evidence and tracks and traces of everything to do with the Jeremy DeWitt case. And now we're going to finalize it with this unbelievable interview. And you don't want to miss it. So I just wanted to pop my head in here today. Just like Motor One would say if he was out of prison. Who knows when he's going to be getting out of prison, by the way. I'll ask him when I'm in there. And we'll get to the bottom of that whole debacle. Because some people said he's getting a lot more than 18 months. I'm going to ask Jeremy DeWitt that. I wasn't going to go because my information said he only got 18 months. But, you know, I've sh I didn't check into it. But somebody else said that he's gotten a lot more than 18 months. So he's obviously still in prison. So that's what I'm doing. Today, by the time you're watching this, I will already be interviewing Jeremy DeWitt. So I will make it there, inshallah. I should be there in 25 minutes if I keep walking at this pace, according to my GPS navigational system. I also want to point out that today's kind of a special day. If you've been following along and you know what's going on today, uh, today is the day that the staff at Orange County Sheriff's Office was informed back in 2019 by Major Robert Anzueto saying not to arrest any Metro State employees. And quote unquote, he says, this is coming from the top. So that email got disseminated on this day so that all the deputies and sergeants and corporals and lieutenants and captains and everybody knows, do not mess with Jeremy DeWitt. Don't arrest them anymore. Of course, this is back in 2019, and that was basically a standing order for a while amongst the Orange County Sheriff's Office in Florida. For some reason, a major sent out an email to a captain telling him to tell everybody, don't mess with Metro State anymore. Of course, after that email came to light, of course, the orders changed, and Marcus Canty would even later testify as the undersheriff and say that everybody was allowed to arrest Metro State if they witnessed them committing a crime. So on this November 24th, 2022, let's also remember that and let's think to ourselves how happy Jeremy DeWitt must have been on that Thanksgiving, getting information from his professional talking friend, you know who, saying that they're going to leave him alone. They're not allowed to arrest him anymore. Jeremy was like, I'm on seventh heaven. Jeremy was even saying, you know, let's call up photo and pretend he's about to get arrested by the SWAT team. That'll be funny because Jeremy felt unstoppable. But now he's in prison and we're going to go sneak in, do a little sleight of hand and get into prison so we can get that interview for the YouTube Jeremy community. Freaking love you guys. I love you guys. All right, I think I see something moving over there. I've got to go. I'll try to report back later. Bye.